And right now downtown, 68 degrees. Time now for the KSL In-Depth and gun control is front and center in the Senate today after last week's mass shooting in Orlando. Joining us on the KSL Newsline is Hinckley Institute of Politics Associate Professor Jim Curry to discuss where Utah senators stand on this latest vote. Is this a foregone conclusion, Professor, or do you think there's any, any room for compromise here? Today, there's, it's probably a foregone conclusion. They're voting on four proposals that have largely been voted on before, and none of them have ever been able to reach the 60-vote threshold that's needed in the Senate. Um, but there is some possibility that later in the week, um, some proposals that are being put together by Senator Susan Collins and Senator Pat Toomey might be able to perhaps break through that gridlock. What's the history of uh, Utah lawmakers as far as voting on some of these bills, say, in the past? Uh, generally, Mike Lee and Orrin Hatch and, and generally the House delegation um, have been supportive of gun rights. They haven't been um, the, the lawmakers that have been in favor of voting for some of these gun control measures, especially the strict ones. And then the Senate, Hatch and Lee, have previously on each of these proposals, because some of these proposals they're voting on today have been voted on once or twice prior in the, in the past few years. Um, both of them essentially have rejected the Democratic proposals, but been supportive of the Republican proposal. When we talked to Senator Lee last week, he said the two sides are not that far apart. So I wonder whether whether you know any of the compromises that they're trying to negotiate today might come together in something that could reach that 60-vote threshold. It's possible, but it's going to be really difficult. I mean, say you say you had a Democratic proposal, or say you have a proposal like Susan Collins that's, that's meant to be written such that she can get all the Democrats to support it. You'd still need a good number of Republicans in the Senate. You would still need essentially 12 Republicans. And that would mean going beyond the four Republicans that have been willing to support Democratic proposals in the past. It would mean going beyond the four additional Republican senators that have indicated their interest in potentially supporting a proposal like this. Um, it, It would need to be something that really captures the concerns of both sides. And and perhaps more importantly, it would need to be something that both sides be willing to put aside the politics of this issue um, and really want to come together around a proposal to actually do something. Yeah, when you talk like that, it kind of reminds me of just after 9-11, when all the lawmakers kind of came together in one of those times. Do you think it's going to take something on, 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 unfortunately, an even bigger scale for something like this to, uh, to get bipartisan support? I think it will. I think it's a really tough issue to get bipartisan support on. You have each party has really core supporters that stand on opposite sides of this issue, right? Strong gun gun rights activists strongly support, are strong core supporters of the Republican Party, and those who are really for really strict gun control measures are core supporters in the Democratic Party. It's In a lot of ways, this is a good issue for the parties to sort of play up for an upcoming election, and we're obviously very close to what will be a very intense election. So it's something that's going to have to be, it's going to be very difficult to put together a proposal that can get essentially both sides to drop those considerations and vote for it. We'll watch what happens uh, tonight when the votes are taken. Thank you, Professor. That is the Hinckley Institute of Politics, Associate Professor Jim Curry on the KSL In-Depth at 15 and 45. KSL News Time now, 749. Another two-